Workshop Topics This is part one, setting up a rotary table on the milling machine. In my workshop, I always try and save setup time. I find setup time eats into a lot of my hours making things in the workshop. And that's why I always prefer to have as many items in the workshop set up and ready to go. This is my current setup, a machine vise on the left and a rotary table on the right. The rotary table is a vertex rotary table, a really good quality device. And I've had this for many years, but used it infrequently. Mainly because it lived in the cupboard underneath the milling machine and it's heavy, and I couldn't be bothered setting it up on the milling table. This setup has proved to be quite useful though. You will notice that I have a four jaw chuck fitted to this rotary table, and this four jaw chuck is the one from my Boxford lathe. And it's proved to be quite useful for holding irregular shaped objects, and this allows accurate drilling of evenly spaced holes in metal components of virtually any shape. The only problem is though, if I need to change this from a vertical position to a horizontal position, it's difficult, because the chuck would be facing the wrong way and I would have to remove the machine vice as well. All far too time consuming. But I have a solution. First of all, I'm using my vacuum cleaner to thoroughly clean the milling table. You always need to thoroughly clean the milling table before mounting any components on it. All these small pieces of metal in the wrong place can cause inaccuracies. I've removed the vertex rotary table because I bought a different type. It's not as good as the vertex rotary table, but it's going to be a bit more flexible in operation. And here it is, and as you can see from this clip, it runs very smoothly. And what's this? I didn't know that it came with a free pork pie. Well, no, this is a three-jaw self-centering chuck that mounts on the rotary table. The chuck was in a box complete with three T-nuts and three mounting bolts, and it was covered in really smelly, rust-preventative oil which I wiped off before I put it together like this. I don't wish to complain, but these bolts are not a good fit in the T-nuts. They don't go all the way through without binding so I had to use an M10 tap to properly cut the thread in the very last part of the T-nuts. I've come across this before with Chinese-made equipment. This is not a difficult job unless, of course, you don't have an M10 tap. And also, if I want to be picky, the T-nuts are not the best fit in the slots. But never mind, I can always make a video called Making T-nuts that fit in your rotary table properly. And not only are these T-nuts a very sloppy fit in the T-slots, with the T-nuts in position, it's impossible to rotate the table because the bottom part of the T-nuts are too deep and they all collided with the clamps at each side, which is something that you don't want to happen. It's a fairly simple solution. I haven't removed the machine vise yet, so one at a time, I clamp the T-nuts into the machine vise and using a small but sharp milling cutter, I just removed some of the bottom part. You may be thinking, that's a very funny way of doing it. Why didn't you just turn the T-nut over in the machine vise and machine the bottom a bit thinner? Have a look at the T-nut in this clip. You will see that the edges are not perfectly square. These are cast and they're fairly round. So doing it this way, at least I will end up with perfectly square T-nuts in the perfectly square T-nut slots. I don't mind doing this because it gives me a chance to test the accuracy of my machine vise, because recently, I've remachined the top parts of the jaws which were looking a little bit chewed up. These jaws were very hard and they took quite a bit of milling. I used a 3 inch diameter face cutter which has carbide tipped teeth. So now the T-nuts fit sort of okay, I'm going to make some more, I don't like these. And when they go over the clamp, they don't foul. And the whole thing moves quite smoothly. And it feels okay, it's quite firm, it's not rattly and it's not loose. This is not an expensive piece of equipment. To say it comes complete with the chuck, it really is fairly cheap. And here you see how it works. When I slacken off the two Allen bolts at each end of the shaft, I can swivel the unit from a vertical position to a horizontal position. I bought this unit from RDG Tools. I drove over there and I had a look at it and I thought, well, it looks all right, really. And while I was there, I asked if they had a more expensive one, and no, they didn't. They had some vertex rotary tables, just like the one that I have, and they were very expensive, but you can't just swing them from vertical to horizontal mode. So I'm not complaining, this rotary table is what it is. Over the years I've sort of got used to having to modify Chinese parts to suit my requirements. 
I thought I would take a quick break from the rotary table and just see how accurate my machine vice is. This, by the way, is after I loosened the mounting bolts. After re-tightening the bolts partially and carefully tapping the machine vise into the correct position using a soft hammer, this is the result. The dial test indicator shows that it's quite accurate. I will have to set up this rotary table in pretty much the same way onto the milling table. But first of all, I need to drill some holes in the base. Now this is a bit weird. Initially, the only way to mount this unit was to use these two 6mm diameter holes. And when I asked the man in the shop why was this the case, he said, well, we left them like that because some people were having difficulty mounting them on the milling machine. But as it worked out in my case, the position of the two 6mm threaded holes was exactly where I needed them to be. So I drilled out the holes, clearance size for a 10mm bolt. And with the base firmly clamped to the milling table, I'm refitting this substantial mounting bracket that supports the swivelling part of the assembly. And here I'm seeing how firm the unit is when it's been swivelled, and it's very firm indeed. In fact, I'm quite pleased with this. Do bear in mind this is not industry, this is my model engineering workshop. And like other things in my workshop which are not top quality, the milling machine itself is an old Korean thing, but it's accurate. In this video, I'm just showing you how I modified the mounting of the rotary table. I will show the final accurate setup of this device using the dial test indicator and then show you how it works in a future video. But before I do that though, I'm going to definitely make some new T-nuts because I don't like these. And in order to do that, I need to remount my machine vise at the left hand side. So that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.